It's official. Donald Trump is now the first president in U.S. history to be impeached twice. And um, rightfully so. There may only be a few days left of his administration, but it's very clear that he is not mentally fit to serve as president. And it's why the House also officially approved a resolution calling on Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment. This passed in a 223-205 to 205 vote. Although Mike Pence has rejected the idea outright, it seemed as if he was considering it with other cabinet secretaries for a moment. But for the most part, he's not going to be doing that. But the House did vote to impeach Donald Trump 232 to 197, with just 10 Republicans voting to impeach. And this includes Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, and others. So this really is uh, historic. Uh, congratulations, Mr. President, I guess. You just made history. You have officially secured yourself a spot in his history books permanently. Getting impeached twice. Wow. Now, the question is, will this actually pass in the Senate? Because it requires a two-thirds majority to convict and officially remove Donald Trump. Now, the question is, what does Mitch McConnell think about this? Because if Mitch McConnell says, no, I don't support impeachment... He can unilaterally kill it just like that. But we're getting some reports that Mitch McConnell is seemingly on board with impeachment, which is uh, surprising, but it's not because he had some like coming to Jesus moment and, you know, he's having this change of heart. There's a very specific reason why he's saying, at least publicly, he supports impeachment, but practically, uh, it doesn't seem as if his actions are telling us that he does support impeachment because he is refusing to call an emergency session so they can deal with impeachment immediately. But nonetheless, he is signaling support for it. So as the New York Times reports, Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, the Republican leader, has told associates that he believes President Trump committed impeachable offenses and that he is pleased that Democrats are moving to impeach him, believing that it will make it easier to purge him from the party, according to people familiar with his thinking. This was before they officially voted on impeachment, by the way. At the same same time, Representative Kevin McCarthy of California, the minority leader and one of Mr. Trump's most steadfast allies in Congress, has asked other Republicans whether he should call on Mr. Trump to resign in the aftermath of the riot at the Capitol last week, according to three Republican officials briefed on the conversations. While Mr. McCarthy has said he is personally opposed to impeachment, he and other Republican Party leaders have decided not to formally lobby Republicans to vote no, and an aide to Mr. McCarthy said he was open to a measure censuring Mr. Trump for his conduct. In private, Mr. McCarthy reached out to a leading House Democrat to see if the chamber would be willing to pursue a censure vote, though Speaker Pelosi has ruled it out. Taken together, the stances of Congress's two top Republicans, neither of whom has said publicly that Mr. Trump should resign or be impeached, reflected the politically challenging and fast-moving nature of the crisis that the party faces after the assault by a pro-Trump mob during a session to formalize President-elect Joseph R. Biden Jr.'s electoral victory. So yeah, this makes me think, you know, if Kevin McCarthy actually did try to whip up the votes for impeachment, uh, would the numbers be higher? And of course, I think the answer to that is yes. Only 10 Republicans voted to impeach. And, you know, you don't really want to go on the record and basically reject someone, vote to impeach someone who <laughs> there's a lot of overlap with his base and your base. And if you want to get reelected, it's best not to piss them off. So, you know, these Republicans who did not vote to impeach, even though they know what Trump did is wrong, they're cowards. What else can you say? This is someone who not only incited a riot, but shortly before that, I know it seems like so long ago, he literally pressured a public official, the Secretary of State from Georgia, to commit fraud. Find the votes needed for him to win the state of Georgia. So anyone who's against this, they're just either a coward or they're against democracy. And at this point, I don't care. It's a distinction without a difference. They're terrible people. Now, I guess I was wrong. Mitch McConnell isn't saying he supports impeachment publicly. These reports are leaking out. But I mean, let's be real here. He wouldn't allow this to get out if he didn't want this to get out. So this is him kind of doing a little bit of a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, because he's sending a message not to Donald Trump, not necessarily to Republicans, but to the donor class who are very, very agitated 
with Donald Trump right now. So he gets no credit. Mitch McConnell hasn't suddenly had a change of heart, but rather, you know, he is there to deliver for the Republican Party's donors. And the reason why only some Republicans are changing their tune right now is because corporate donors have threatened to cut off Republicans that partook in Trump's effort to undermine the election. This includes health insurance companies like Blue Cross Blue Shield, the Marriott, fossil fuel donors like BP, and also Wall Street firms, big banks uh, such as uh, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, JP Morgan Chase. So the thing about Mitch McConnell that we've all got to realize is that when donors say to jump, his only question is how high. So had donors not basically put this pressure on the Republican Party, Mitch McConnell would not be moving to uh, impeach Donald Trump or even signal support at all to impeach Donald Trump because Mitch McConnell, he he's not even like, I don't even picture him as like a human being at this point in my mind. I've dehumanized him to the point to where he's just like this machine that acts at the behest of the Republican Party's donors. And even if his actions undermine democracy and destroy our entire system, our regime, he doesn't care. He just does what the donors ask. And if the donors ask him to, you know, uh, do something, if they reprogram him and get him to seemingly take a 180, that's not him. He's not like a rational actor here. He's not acting uh, as, as like a human being would. This is, this is a robot, basically. So, yeah, there you have it. We don't know where this is going to go. Odds are it's not going to get through the Senate, even if it does pass. Uh, before inauguration, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, it, it seems like there's a possibility that they they will reconvene on the 19th, which means that you've got one day to convict Donald Trump uh, before Biden is inaugurated. And then at that point, once Biden is inaugurated, that urgency will vanish. So it likely won't happen. Um, so, you know, this is, this is really, this is fascinating. And it's really difficult to try to like digest all of the details as it happens. But this really is a historic moment like a sitting president has been impeached twice impeached twice that is a uh, well deserved for uh someone who is a terrible human being who has done irreparable harm to our country and our democracy mike is a total loser so don't hit the subscribe button okay and whatever you do folks do not hit the notification bell either mike treats me so unfairly